Hello and welcome back to The Metamistic Show. It's great to see everybody. Today we're going to be talking about happiness and how happiness is actually a process. You don't just like wake up happy <laughs> like at all. And some people might have more of like a predisposition for a more carefree personality that may mimic the appearance of happiness. But I've known a lot of people, and even if people seem like bippy and, and smiling, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're happy. That could just be like their personality. So anyways, I don't know why I felt like I had to say that. Maybe there's somebody listening or watching right now that feels like people think that they're happy because they have like a great personality. Um, that doesn't always necessarily equate to happiness. You could just be super charismatic or somebody that really does well like at your job. You know, maybe you're like, you have like a customer service voice or whatever. So today's episode I've entitled Happiness is a Process. Crossing through realms of sadness to access your happiest, higher self. That's a lot packed into one title. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm a Mercury kind of a gal. I, I pack a lot of words into one idea, but this is one idea. The lineup I have here, my six cards that I have today. I want to start with the Three of Cups. This is our first card. And when I looked at this card, remember, I pull these cards to get the topic for the episode. So this is a little bit different. There's no time. Um, there's These are not time-based messages. These are messages that I ask my guides to give me a message to speak on for the collective. So a little bit different than traditional tarot if this is your first time watching. Three of Cups. When I looked at this Three of Cups, I instantly saw the Three of Swords, another three. And I couldn't get away from that. I kept staring at the Three of Cups and thinking like, that's literally the opposite of the Three of Swords. The Three of Cups is a card of celebration, reconciliation, partying, fun, even around them, there's this cornucopia, which symbolizes like abundance, harvest season, which we're actually in as I'm filming today. I'm filming in November. So when I looked at this card, it's, it's kind of like what I started off with. It's kind of interesting that I said what I said at the start of this episode about like, just because you're somebody that smiles a lot or is like really good with people, it doesn't necessarily mean that when you're laying in your bed at night while you're like staring up at the ceiling thinking about everything that you didn't have time to think about during the day that doesn't necessarily mean that you're happy it just means you are playing the game right okay so anyways three of cups this is a card that says to me when you're in the Three of Swords, this card today, I should say, is what it's saying to me. When I was looking at this and seeing the Three of Swords, the Three of Swords is a card that has three swords stuck into a heart. I always found it fascinating that with the Three of Swords, it is a swords card. Swords are thoughts. Swords are your, your mindset. Swords is the intellectualizing of your emotions, or, or the three of swords is intellectualizing your emotions. And we're going to talk about that concept a little bit later when I get down to the two of swords. But let's stay on this. Three of cups. When I was looking at the three of cups, I just could not get away from the three of swords. And I was thinking of the three of swords and how there's three swords in it. And if those swords went all the way through, it would split your heart into three Imagine your heart split open into three pieces, right? And since it's a swords card, it's like you're thinking about that. You're thinking about 
all the times that things didn't work out, all the times that people betrayed you and hurt you, all the times that you put yourself out there and people misunderstood you, etc. It split your heart into three pieces. And just because we know how to do a really good job of like tying that up, I'm seeing a funny imagery as I'm speaking. I'm seeing like, it's, it's the equivalent of like using duct tape to tape up like your muffler on your car. It's like your muffler falls off and you're literally just like taping it up, right? That might, you know, that might kind of pacify the issue. Like you might be somebody who is really good at holding yourself together. And I'm not saying that's a bad skill. That's, that is a, to me, that is a form of wisdom on how, on how to get through this world, right? So I'm not, if you feel that way and you relate to what I'm saying, that you put on a brave face and you know how to play the game, quote unquote, that doesn't mean that you're a hypocrite. I'm just, I'm talking backstage right now to you. I'm not talking about how amazing you are and how talented you are and how much everybody loves you. That's a given. This is like the after party. This is like when everybody goes home and there's there's cups everywhere and there's popcorn kernels all over the floor and there's dishes in the sink and there's like three stragglers left at the party and we're talking on the couch. This is you and me talking on the couch, right? All of that obvious stuff aside, I'm talking to you as a friend and I'm saying, let's look at the deeper layer here with this three of cups, because the three of cups can be a party. Interesting that I'm, I'm using that as an analogy. This is like, this is like the truth being revealed, like in those late hours after everybody's gone home. All right, so now that we're here, let's go to the next card, the nine of cups. This is, this is the antidote this is the solution. This is what I have to offer after many, many, many years of on a daily basis. Day, and I'm talking daily. I'm not talking like, uh, oh, let's go to a conference and figure out how to like better ourselves. I'm talking about like this is every single day, every morning I get in the shower, every night when I pull the blanket over my chest and I go to sleep. Right. So this that's why I truly believe and that's the title of this episode that happiness is a process. Right? Oh, that person looks happy though. And that brings us back around, right? Okay. Just be my, my point with saying all that is because it, you don't have to be like chronically depressed or like you could just be kind of plugging along and getting your work done and you have friends and you're, you know, you're getting along and, and it's, it's, it's that sort of an energy that I have in this reading where it's like you do a great job in your life. This is not a comment on that. This is a comment on the behind the curtain. How do we get happier? basically, is the point of this episode. So let's let's go a step further with this. My point was qualifying all of that in this episode of like, you could look happy but not really be happy is because I want to get everybody in here. Nobody gets out alive on my podcast. <laughs> I want to always look at both sides of the extremes because it's ironic that the people that are, it's kind of like being a functioning alcoholic where People don't notice. Maybe you don't even notice. Um, but let's go to the other side of the extreme, right? Where maybe you are really struggling. Maybe it's hard to keep a smile on your face. Maybe you feel freaking numb, dude. Nine of cups, maybe you are drinking. Maybe you are... Because nine of cups on the negative side can be overindulging. Maybe you're overeating. We don't have the devil here in this spread today, but we do have the nine of cups. And the nine of cups in the reverse is not just 
sadness, you know, because the Nine of Cups in the upright is contentment, fulfillment, happiness, um, feeling good, right? It doesn't always just necessarily mean, wow, I feel really bad when it's in the negative. Sometimes it can have this overindulgence element. Um, so you could be struggling with addictions or at the very least trying to fill a void. I'm, I just keep seeing at night, at night, at night. A lot of us in today's society are so freaking busy during the day. We're, we are booked and busy. I don't think that that's really a good thing, just as my commentary on our modern society. <laughs> it's not good for the, for the nervous system. It's certainly not good for the freaking brain, especially if you already are somebody that struggles with the stuff that I'm about to get into. So anyways, as much time possible as we can take to literally sit silently or with, I, I always put on like either frequencies on YouTube, like I'll, I'll usually put on like 963 hertz or like I put on all sorts of different ones and just kind of have it in the background. And for me, I'm telling you right now, one of the hardest things for me to do is to quiet my brain. I'm not even talking about meditation. I'm just talking about literally just like you could have a bunch of thoughts in your mind. Let's just start there. Even just sitting silently for five minutes can be a task sometimes for me because I'm I'm always operating on such a like high frequency all day. I'm always doing a bunch of stuff, right? I don't necessarily think that that's a good thing. And I'm just admitting that to you guys. I'm saying that Part of happiness for me, cultivating this happiness, this process of achieving a higher state of happiness has had to be a really a big punch in the gut for me when it comes to how I spend my free time. Like for me, food has been an issue. So I'll speak on that for a second. Some of you may relate where it's like I work so hard that sometimes the only thing that... <laughs> that is like enjoyable to me is like eating like I'm a foodie I love cooking I love baking right I, I I really just love food in general I love crappy food I love gourmet food it doesn't really matter I love food anyways I'm a Taurus moon I don't know what to tell you my point with saying that though is that is not a healthy that's nine of cups in the reverse like it's fine for me to like food it's another thing for me to be like oh it's not that bad though it's not as bad as when I used to drink every night yeah but it's I'm still using food to fill a void right and so I've been really really working on my health nine of cups in the upright where I have been allowed you know I know it's the most cliche and the thing in the world the word moderation especially when it comes to food I know that that can be kind of like, eh, because there's just so much misinformation. We literally didn't even know. Nutrition is a newer science to begin with, and I'm not going to go on a, a tangent about that. I'm You're talking to somebody. I used to actually have a YouTube channel um, that no longer exists now. <laughs> well, it exists, but I used, I used to have a... Um, weight loss YouTube channel back in like 2009 for like seven years and I, I documented my entire weight loss journey. I lost 100 pounds. Um, I am someone who went on the extremes though. So it's like I went from binge eating disorder, BED, all the way into, and I've talked about this before on my podcast on one episode, um, and I, I also have dipped into, I've had an, another side of the eating disorder, which would be the anorexia side where I didn't eat at all. So for me, that's those are just as toxic on both extreme, nine of cups in the reverse, right? So I just want to bring a little bit of this in there. Um, we can even think, like at the time, I thought that I was doing something so awesome when I was running six miles a day and eating like a thousand calories and on a raw food diet, I used to do something called raw till four, um, where you eat only raw foods, only 
only raw nuts, seeds, vegetables, fruits, right? And then you have a cooked dinner, right? So anyways, I used to do that. I'm not saying that there aren't super healthy people that do all this stuff. What I'm saying is for me, it's I'm trying to get into the tricky crevices here. It's like, oh, yeah, but I'm doing so great and I lost 50 pounds. And yeah, but dude, you're actually starving yourself, though. And you're posting yourself like every single day on your Instagram. This was years ago. This is I did this years ago. I used to post my my body shots all the time I used to post my food every day. So it's this subconscious thing of like, or maybe it's not so subconscious. People are watching what I eat. People are watching to see my next big milestone. But I had already gotten down to such a low weight that I couldn't lose any more weight. And since I'm somebody, I'm saying all this for you because I know some of you will relate to this mindset. I'm an achiever. I'm an overachiever. So for me, it's like, I didn't know when to stop is my point. I went from starting off by eating whole foods, which was a good thing, right? To just becoming more and more and more and more extreme. I felt like if I did not become a raw foodist full time, then I did not achieve my happiest, healthiest, highest timeline, right? At that time. So my point, I'm trying to be tricky here. I'm trying to get everybody, everybody in the room. Yeah, but I'm doing great things for myself. Yeah, but is it unhealthy though? We need to look at this stuff. Yeah, I'm not drinking. I'm I'm not partying. I'm not doing drugs. I'm not I'm not a sex addict. I'm not it's like great. I'm I'm glad I'm glad that we are not those things, but at the same time it's like but where are we those extremes? Are we overworking ourselves to the point where we don't know how to take one day off? Hi, everyone. Missy Gordon, the Meta Mystic here. Hi, hello. Nice, nice to see everybody. Um, it's hard for me to take 10 minutes off, let alone a day, because I have used work. Hi, everybody. I've used work to avoid my emotions. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Hi, it's Missy Gordon, the Meta Mystic here. Let's just be clear about that. Okay. I'm just trying to be honest so that you guys can see like literally look at this guy nine of cups It looks like he has a backdrop behind him Right <laughs> Now let me get off of this point because I had to I had to dip into the negative of the nine of cups So we can get to the positive which truly is the antidote of how do we become happier nine of cups is how we become happier so I want to look at that, but I'm just saying sometimes our minds get super tricky and we think that by overworking and over exercising to the point of like collapsing on the treadmill. Oh, I'm, I'm just I'm improving myself. I'm oh, I'm just going to shoot a little bit of testosterone. It's like, all right, everybody, you know what I'm saying? I've known lots of different types of people in my day and people that appear to be healthy sometimes are the most unhealthiest in the room. Some people are just more charismatic than others and stuff. So that's why I'm opening the curtain to all that today. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Now I want to kind of level out the conversation here and just bring it back to neutral because I've, I've said a lot already. So now that I have everybody here, let's, let's bring it back around. I have the chariot and I have the three of cups. All right, we're going to get we're going to get to these nines and by nines I also have the I mean the 9 of wands and the 9 of cups cuz those two for sure go together. They came out right under each other and we're going to talk about the nines next. But first I've got to say something here with the chariot and the 3 of cups. Putting our hearts back together, remember everything we talked about with the 3 of swords and like tying your heart, tying your heart with twine basically to like hold it together. You know, we can do these things through our outer appearance. You know, we can do it through three of cups. Like, we look like the life of the party, but inside we're dead. It's like, think of the, some of the most hilarious comedians in the world. For, for whatever reason, I have studied comedians since I was a child. I've always been fascinated with comedians, stand-up specifically, because 
try doing a set for for an hour and keep people interested in laughing. I feel like that's one of the most challenging things that you can do on this planet anyways. My point with with that is the I think one of the main reasons why I'm I've always been so drawn to comedians is because they make everybody else laugh. But many, many times they're the saddest people in the room. Right? That's this three of cups. It's like in front of people, maybe you're this. This is me. So that's why I'm I'm saying it. <laughs> right? This is 100% me. And I'm sure some of you relate to this. Um, and that's why I, I, for one, believe happiness is a process. And it's something that I work on every single day. So that's why we're talking about this today. I will say that with this chariot energy, chariot is cancer. Chariot is, I always look at the chariot as like a strong gust of water blasting forward at you like rapids like the chariot is like rapids imagine these three people stepping into the white water rapids they're gonna get blown away right the chariot's no joke the chariot is one of the most powerful energies in the deck just because it's water instead of like fire or wind you know what i'm saying water can kill you for sure so it's it's that force it's like the force of opening up a dam and it blows it blows that water out. So what I'm saying here, water is the emotions. Water is your heart. How do you heal your heart? How do you become happier? It's through this intensity. It's it's not just going to be like, and I'm not making fun of anything, right? But there's a lot of information out here today that's like, oh, you know, just just slap on a little self care. Just just put a few rose petals in that in that tub, <laughs> and it'll just it'll it'll brighten you right up. It's like okay, I'm talking to people that you know are struggling to become more happy, even if you don't want to admit it to yourself, or even if you're you know you're all right, but you could be happier. Like this is across the board this episode. So, anyways, my point is. How do you become happier? It takes a lot of effort, number one. And we're going to get to the nine of wands. The nine of wands, he didn't become the nine of wands over the night. The nine of wands went through a lot of steps to get to that point of like exhaustion and feeling like he's like almost over the finish line. He's gone through so much to get there. And we're going to get to that. But I want to stick with this chariot for a second because when you go through this process of trying to become more happy, right, and more like fulfilled with your life, nine of cups, more fulfilled with who you are, it, it does take a lot of effort and force. And I'm not going to pretend that it doesn't. Right. I'm not just going to be like, here's five tips on how to become happier. (laughs) And I'm not being an asshole either. I'm just saying. (laughs) I'm just saying it's like I have I remember I bought I think it was called like the science of happiness or something. This was so many years ago. It was it was a pretty dry book. It was a psychology book that I I don't even remember the name. It's probably not even called that. I bought that when I was like 14 basically like trying to figure out how do I become happier so like this has been you know almost lifelong right because before that I didn't know (laughs) I didn't even know I could be happy I know that sounds really sad but I remember being six years old and feeling like that sad clown, you know, because I, as a kid, I was very, like, charismatic, I would make everybody else laugh, I'd, like, pull up my pants really high and do all this crazy shit, but on the inside, I felt completely damaged at six, so anyways, my point is that I'm not, you know, everything I'm saying here is because it's something that I'm like well acquainted with. It's not just me being like, here's five tips. Okay, so anyways. <laughs> um, anyways, if they're five, if if somebody has a video that are, are five really good tips, then send it my way. Thank you. 
because I'm not just being an asshole. The chariot is a, it's a force of emotion. It's like we have to face it. It's like, it's literally like facing ourselves. In order to bring our hearts together, three of cups, we need to face ourselves. And what does that mean? It means we need to stand in our own rapids. We need to feel that water hitting against our skin and burning our skin. You know what I mean? It's like the reality. It's like let your own feelings be a mirror is part of this process with the chariot. It's not for the faint of heart. It's not it's it's not actually a happy process to become happy. At least in my experience, it's actually it makes you feel very vulnerable and raw and like kind of awkward and embarrassed and sh ashamed of yourself. And like um, there is somebody that I really like. Her name is Brene Brown, and she has spent many, many years specifically studying vulnerability in people Um she has a very famous TED Talk. If you type in Brene Brown on YouTube, if you type in Brene Brown um, vulnerability, you will find so much good information from her. Like, I learned a lot from her. Um, she's really helped me with myself, with my own vulnerability. That's what I'm trying to talk about with the chariot. Being vulnerable is not necessarily easy, especially if you're somebody who is, like, the life of the party and is really great with people and stuff. Um... No one would ever even know that you're sad, right? So anyways, it starts with the self. Nine of cups. Now we're going to get to this nine of wands. It starts with the self. Like you need to you need to look at your own emotions and yourself first so that then it can expand to others. Being vulnerable with yourself will then expand to being vulnerable with others. Some of the best speakers in history, some of the best musicians, the best writers, the, the most influential people of history are loved like that because of their vulnerability. If you really think about why do I love this person? Why do I feel so strongly about the work that this person did? It's if you really think about it, it's because you felt like you could, you could connect with them, right? It's like you felt like you were in a room with them. You were like the only one in the room. Even if there was a, an audience of thousands and thousands of people, you feel like they're right there with you. It's that vulnerability, the humanity between the two people, the many people in one that helps you to connect in that way. So vulnerability if we don't have it with ourselves, we're not going to have it with anybody else. And if we want to do anything important, we've got to have it with ourselves so we can have it with other people. You know what I'm saying? All right. So let's get to this this next part here. Remember how I was talking about the chariot and how it's an intense energy. It's a powerful energy. It's like it reminds me of some of the sessions that Kyle Cease does. Kyle Cease is another resource today. Kyle Cease that I'm going to talk about in a second and also Brene Brown, um, I would recommend specifically her vulnerability talks because we're going to wrap around back to vulnerability again with this two of swords. But let me go back to this for a second. The chariot reminds me of kind of some of the sessions that you see on Kyle Cease's channel, specifically when he's talking to people and he's doing these, I think he calls them like the hot seat or something where he'll, he'll literally live go through this unearthing process my phone is about to do an 11 11 alarm here <laughs> so I'm, I'm catching it right before make a wish everybody it's about to be 11 11 but let me turn my alarm off so it doesn't <laughs> doesn't interrupt us okay let me get my all right I'm talking about Kyle Steve talking about hot seat <clears throat> I don't want to lose my audience here <laughs> now I'm opening my fan app Come on. Oh, my God. Like, what's going on here? Okay. So I'm back. This reminds me, the chariot reminds me of what Kyle Cease does on his um, calls where he'll have somebody, he'll have somebody that begins to open up with him 
on all different types of topics, all different sorts of things that it, it, it all comes back to the inner child, right? And this Three of Cups is an inner child sort of an energy. It's like you don't care that there's like lipstick smeared on the side of your face because you're with your friends, like you're your child, like you're running down the beach, you know, there's sand everywhere, you're, you don't care like how you look, you don't care how you sound, you're just, you're happy, right? But if we can't face with this chariot energy, if we can't face our sadness, how in God's name are we ever going to face our joy? Because you can't have one without the other. You're, let's, let's take up this Two of Swords just for a minute and then we're going to come back to it. With this Two of Swords, it's like you're going to stay in this neutral space, which is really a space of avoidance. It's not strong. It's not balanced. It's avoidance, right? And so we're going to come back to this. So what I want to say about Kyle Cease is that it is a process with him that he will take people through. And I highly recommend Kyle Cease's channel, especially if you're doing inner child work, healing, working on yourself. He has a bunch of stuff for free on his channel, right? Okay. So with this chariot energy, it's like it is it, it is something that needs to be faced in the same way that you're standing in the ocean and that wave smacks up against you, right? All right. <clears throat> so nine of cups, nine of wands, nine, nine. How do we become happier? It's a process. That's why there are, there are these two nines here. I think that that's why they gave me these cards to show that they're both nines. Nines talk about change, right? You know that phrase, to the nines, like they're dressed to the nines. It means like they're they're dressed really well, which is interesting because of what everything that we talked about, about like you could look amazing, you could be charismatic, everybody could be laughing at your jokes, you could be a great communicator, but then when you're alone, you're sad, Hi everybody. Hello. Hi, my name is Missy Gordon. Okay, just so we know, we know, we know who's in the room. Um, Nine of Wands is an energy of, like I said before, this guy's been at this thing for a bit. Okay, two completely different energies. And for those of you listening on Spotify and Apple um, podcasts, I am showing these two cards. So head on over to the Metamistic on YouTube if you'd like to see a visual representation of this. Thank you all. But for those of you who are watching on YouTube, if you want to like listen in your car or you're at the gym, it is a good way to also listen to these if you just want the audio. But anyways, these two nines, right? Look at this nine of cups. Look at how he's sitting. He has kind of, he's, he, he's, he's relaxed. He has his legs open, kind of, you know, he, he has his, you know, his, his body is kind of, it kind of, he's a bit proud in the way he's sitting. He kind of feels proud of himself. He's, he's wearing a nice outfit. You know, he feels good about who he is. He's in a room of people possibly, and yet he feels very confident, self-assured. He doesn't need people to blow smoke up his ass. He's just happy to be there. He just kind of is who he is, right? Nine of Cups. He is who he is because he's he's faced himself. He's faced the chariot. He's faced his truth, right? So when he's around other people, he just shows up as himself and that energy is what we want to get to. To me, that is happiness. It's just being, feeling good in your own skin. You know, you're kind of living in the flow. You know what I'm saying? We talk a lot about the flow in the spiritual community. But, but look at this guy on the Nine of, of Wands. He, his stance, he's kind of, he's holding his, you know, he's he's holding his, his wand. He, he's kind of, he's kind of looking around, kind of shifty eyed. He, he kind of looks like he's in a fight or flight mode. I mean, this guy's just chilling at the party, right? He, you know, he's just, he's having a drink. He, he's, he's making jokes with his friends, talking about his vacation that he just came back from because he's balanced and he's also a hard worker. In the, he's talking about his vacation that he just came back from, but on the same, in the same sentence, then he talks about like, oh yeah, and we're, we're doing really great this quarter. So he's balanced, right, in the high vibration of the Nine of Cups. He knows how to relax. He also knows how to work hard. That's why he's so confident in, in the way that he's presenting, right? 
But this nine of wands, man, it's a totally different thing. And even if... <laughs> it's, it's almost as if these are, like, parallels. Like... It's possible, and this is gonna, this is where it's gonna get a little tricky, and that's why I started off this whole episode with what I started off with regarding like somebody could look super happy. Now let's go on the other side. For some, you are really in this position, Nine of Cups, where you do, you've done the work, the work, quote unquote. Um, what is that book called, The Work? That it's a really good book as well. I'll link it down below in the resources. Just so you guys know, whenever I mention this stuff, I put it down in my resources list down in the description so that you can um, get this stuff. But and I'll I'll link her book down there as well. Her book helped me a lot. It's called The Work. So, anyways, it, but at the same time, it could be that he feels Nine of Wands inside, and that's why this is a process. Don't be discouraged because. You could be showing up as nine of cups and feel nine of wands inside. But this is the, the point I really want to make because this is the work, right? It's like we can do all of this like heavy self-development stuff when we're alone, right? And I absolutely 100% recommend doing that. I do it every single day of my life. But this is what I want to say. What, it, it's like testing, it's like testing the wings of an airplane when you come into contact with other people after you have been working on yourself this is the test. They test airplanes. They test to make sure that the wings, that everything is correct before they use the plane, obviously. So it's like the best way to test your work is to go around other people and start being vulnerable around them. <laughs> this has been one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do in my entire life. Um, and I'm doing it right now on this podcast, okay? And I, I do it to the best of my ability with the people in my life. I try to be as vulnerable as possible with people. Um, so anyways, my point with this is if you're feeling nine of wands, that's good. That means that, because nine of wands is a card of perseverance. I know I've said a lot in this episode, but honestly, this nine of wands is probably the most important card that we have here. Why? Because of this nine of cups, nine of wands. This is what we want, right? We want to go from the nine of wands, not sure of ourselves, not confident, fight or flight mode, right? Closed off to other people, not vulnerable, not comfortable in our own skins. We want to go from that to the exact opposite of all of that, which is this nine of cups, right? <clears throat> so <laughs> this nine of wands is so important because the nine of wands, even though he looks all like battle weary because he is, the trick of this process of becoming more happy is to do this work, right? Um, it is not something that happens overnight. That's why I titled this Crossing Through Realms of Sadness. And by realms, I mean this Four of Wands. The four, it's interesting that I had that 11-11 alarm that came on during this episode because I look at this often as my 11-11 card, the Four of Wands. It's a portal card. See these wands on this side and these wands on this side? It looks like an 11 lemon, doesn't it? This is a portal card. This is why I titled this episode Crossing Through Realms of Sadness to Access Your Happiest Higher Self because your higher self is this Nine of Cups already. It's not like, oh, I have to create this. I have to create this. That's why I, I carefully chose the word access. Because it's kind of like unlocking access to who you really are. That's what this work is. It's uncovering yourself. It's not like, oh, I have to create this. We're not really creating. We're more just 
being who we really are. That's what happiness is to me. Being yourself. One of my mentors, Ken Wheeler, talks about that wisdom is actually just self-proximity. To become wise is just to be close to yourself, basically. In proximity to the higher self, nine of cups. I'm... For some reason right now I'm smelling chili as I'm saying that. That might be significant to somebody. I don't I'm I don't even eat chili. So anyways, um I've been a pescatarian for a couple years now. 9 of wands. 9 of wands is a card of never giving up. Right? How do we become happier? We do this private work like we talked about, this heavy emotional stuff. Facing ourselves, being vulnerable with ourselves, being honest with ourselves, and there's lots of ways to do this. Like I mentioned, Kyle Cease, like for example, right? All of that stuff, yes, it does matter 100%. I would recommend doing that stuff every single day, right? So that's what I mean by the work, right? Read books, podcasts, listen to mentors, then test it. Nine of Wands. Allow for that work to be seen by others. Interact with others. Let others kind of ping off you and you ping off them. You open up about your childhood a little bit. Even if people reject it or they don't... Because not everybody wants to be happier. Not everybody wants to do all this work, right? So that then then we get into, well, you got to get around other people. Three of Cups. You got to get around new people. That's for another episode. episode excuse me. Buy merch to support the channel. Thank you. Links in description. All right. So my final point here is this this portal energy here with the with the two of swords and the four of wands here. Oh, but final thing on the nine of wands. My point with the nine of wands is that this stuff does take work. That's really my point with this episode. It is a process. It's doing that work and then it's testing that work. And by testing that work, I mean get around some people, do some stressful things, do some things that scare you. Like I'm like this podcast, this podcast, me being vulnerable about my own experiences and stuff, even after all these years of doing this kind of thing, is very challenging to me. I'm going to be honest with you. So I'm testing my work right now as I'm sitting in front of you live on this episode. Right. So that's an example of how you test the work. Maybe for you, testing the work is normally you you keep your piano playing to yourself. Maybe maybe play a piece for a couple friends. That's an example of this nine of wands. Even if you feel like this guy, just keep doing that work. That's what the nine of wands does. He keeps going no matter what. Even if he does feel awkward. Even if he does feel shy. Even if the fight or flight does come up. Oh, I remember when my dad was critical of me. And he said that I needed to practice more. And then my grandma laughed at me. And said that blah, blah, blah. Whatever. It's like... All that crap can come up while you're playing the piece for your friends. But if you come to the end of that, and then it's silent, and everybody's like, oh my god, I, I didn't know you were so talented. Nine of Wands. That is going to be your work. It's, it's like all of that, not that we need other people's validation. That's not my point. I'm just saying you can go home that night, Nine of Cups, knowing that you express the side of yourself to the world as an example. That's one example of how we can test this workout. Okay, so here we go. The Four of Wands is the portal, right? The Two of Swords is like what I was talking about before with vulnerability with Brene Brown, okay? The Two of Swords to me is a card of avoidance, That's why we started off with the three of swords, because the three of swords is it's like marinating in the hurt on the negative end and on the positive end, it's healing through the pain, right? The two of swords to me is one of my least favorite cards in the tarot because it's it looks like this. This person is sitting with a blindfold on. 
swords over their heart, blocking their heart. They are not vulnerable with others. They are not vulnerable with themselves, right? At least on the nine of wands, he's like, he doesn't have a blindfold on. Yeah, he's beat up, but at least he's out there. It's the wands. He's out in the world. Swords, man, that's all in your mind. Completely closed off, even to your own self. Don't want to look at your problems. Don't want to look at the truth of who you are. Don't want to look at what can fix you even. Just don't want to deal with it. Don't want to think about it. And that's most people. Most people live on autopilot and most people are in the matrix. Let's just make it quick and snappy, all right? <laughs> Right? But I'm not talking to those people. I'm talking to people who are lo listening to this episode that happiness is a process and you're willing to do the work, right? All right. <laughs> two of Swords. It's like, look at this whole. In the Two of Swords, since it's of the mind, it's almost like this person's like lost at sea in a way. But they're not, because look at in, in today's today's episode this is how i'm seeing it right behind this person with the two of swords is this whole city with celebration and warmth see how it's all cool tones and the two of swords it's very mental it's very intellectualizing our emotions it's like okay well this happened to me when i was seven and you know that happens to many people so therefore i'm not affected by that it's like yes you are dude we're all affected by it they they picked you last time after time after time for baseball and they called you fat and they said they said that you were a loser that didn't hurt your feelings no it didn't really hurt my feelings it's like all right glad glad i'm talking to a robot have a good day thank you for your time it's like that's the two of swords you're so numb not you but just you generally you so numb to even your own emotions that you've literally cut yourself off from humanity. Like this stuff gets serious. It's like, it's not strength to be in the two of swords. It's not strength to not be vulnerable. It is not strength to close your eyes to your own traumas and your own work. Remember what I was saying before about what connects you to other people is vulnerability? This is the opposite of that. But even if you have spent your life this way, and I have spent many periods of my life in this two of swords, don't want to look at it, don't want to think about it, don't want to access that stuff. Like I do a lot of like hypnosis work, um, self-hypnosis specifically, I should say. I would love to actually have a talented person put me under, you know, but I usually do this work on myself. But anyways... Very similar to parts work, if you really think about it, IFS, family systems, internal family systems, which is probably kind of more like fringe science to people that are in the psychology field. I do believe that it dips into more of the hypnotherapy side of things. If we could just kind of mix it in the middle, I feel like it would be really, really beneficial, but that's for another day. So anyways, meaning combining science and like spiritual I think if we can just meet in the middle, we both have good points, then we can like really do big, deep inner change, like the deep, deep change like Dolores Cannon talked about. Like there's a certain level, there's a certain state. It's like theta state or something. I don't know. I'm not I'm not using the right terms. But regardless, she talked about the fact, and I love Dolores Cannon. I, I've listened to a lot of her. I've looked into a lot of her work, I should say. I've listened to a lot of her lectures, but... <laughs> that that gets into the fun fringy stuff. I, I'm I'm kind of a crazy person and I, I like all that like alien stuff. But anyways <laughs> My point is that she talked about how when you put somebody under it you can get to a deeper state where you're literally even accessing like people's past lives at that point. That's the sort of stuff that I'm really interested in, like past life regression and stuff like that, which I've, I've actually been able to, to access. And I believe that many, many people can access just by doing self-hypnosis. That's another thing I, I would recommend as you're doing this work to become more happy, right? It's a process. And what's the process? Everything we talked about. Plus, I would also suggest doing like some hypnotherapy work. You literally, Michael Seeley, I think is is um, somebody on YouTube. I've listened to a lot of his stuff. Type in hypnosis, um, like hypnosis meditation or something like that. 
and you will find a bunch of stuff. I literally will lay in my bed with my headphones on and I will just allow myself to go deep in there. I've done Akashic Records stuff. I've done past life regression. I have seen my past lives. I've, I've understood things about myself through hypnosis. I would highly recommend that for those of you who would like to um, work more on yourself. That's something that I, I really do recommend. So anyways, my point with this, and this is my final point, two of swords, four of wands. We need to go from not being vulnerable to being vulnerable with ourselves and then with other people. Because when we do that, that is when we access our humanity. And when we access our humanity, we access our true souls. And when we access our true souls, we access our higher selves. And our higher selves are in this nine of cups. It's really a matter of digging this up, or really it's more up there, if anything. It's really more ascending to the person that we already are. It's not necessarily, it's not necessarily psychological, although, like I said, I always combine science and spirituality. That is, that's, that's my brand. So anyways, all we've got to do is continue to work on ourselves even when it's hard. That's what puts us through these realms, these portals. And it's something that it's not just like, oh, I'm going to do one hypnosis. I'm going to listen to one Kyle Cease video and shed a tear and then and then I'm good. It's like, no, this stuff, it's a lifelong pursuit. And I'm not trying to put a damper on, you know, I know that it sounds way better for me to be like, 30 days and you'll be completely healed of all your lifelong trauma. Come join my course. I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm just saying people make thousands and thousands and thousands and millions of dollars on that stuff. And I'm not saying I'm not going to do that because I, you know what I'm saying? Like I got to pay my rent too. <laughs> but what I am saying though, is this content that I'm giving away for free right now, this is genuine. And it, all my work will always be genuine. I'm just saying this stuff is the work. Happiness is really I'm using the word happiness what I really mean is oneness with your higher self that's really what I'm talking about here and oneness with the collective vulnerability connection humanity why we're even here right okay I'm gonna close on that I love you guys so much thank you all for being here Always great to talk and connect with you guys. Leave comments down below. I'd love to hear your stories. I'd love to hear what you think about this episode as well. You can also write in questions if you have any. I'll do my best to answer those. Um, if you'd like to support the channel, obviously YouTube currency, as we know, like, comment, share, subscribe, as well as you can support the channel by buying merch or donating if you want to help me get a better camera, things for my studio so I can up level here. I also have um, this new merch that I'm testing out. I already tested this out. I'll just open it on camera here. I just got this one sent to me um, as a replacement because the first one that came in, for some reason, this one, the white one, I put through the dishwasher a bunch of times and it was totally fine. It's black lettering, okay? Mm. On this black cup... For some reason, on my last cup, the E came off, or it, like it scratched off partially. So I don't know if it's just because it's white lettering and it's different, um, but I'm going to test this one more time and see if that other one was just a fluke or if I can actually put this in my shop. Either way, we're going we're gonna to do one more test on it because I really do like the black better, so I'm hoping that it'll work out. Regardless, I like to sell things that are of high quality. I don't like to sell you guys junk. But I am going to put these black shirts up on the Etsy shop. I already have the white ones up there, so you can always support the channel through those means. I love you guys, and I will see you on the next episode.